Part 5 presents a series of conclusions. The first conclusion concerns holistic theories. These theories typically emphasize the study of systems as coherent wholes with unique properties emerging at the level of the whole from the interaction of its parts. Biometrics theory additionally suggests the notion that wholes span different realities and that each level of reality emerges from the interaction with the other levels. The conclusion of this in terms of research is that a truly holistic research inquiry needs to look at a system as a whole that is comprised of parts which are holes in their own right, that the system is a holistic part within larger holes, and that uh, the system is a whole that spans different levels of reality. In terms of transdisciplinarity, I would like to offer the following conclusion. As a management consultant, I have personally experienced that by including the transdisciplinary perspectives and considerations into a research project, one gains a more holistic view of the world and also creates better solutions for the complex problems that we as humanity face. How can biometrics theory contribute to the improvement of research and creation of better solutions? The concepts of biometrics theory provide a framework of questions that prompt a transdisciplinary contextualization of research in the various scientific disciplines. It also facilitates transdisciplinary research and dialogue. The key concepts of biometrics theory can be seen on our web page. The headings can be translated into questions. Can biometrics methodology contribute to finding better solutions for humanity's complex problems? We believe it can because biometrics theory also describes generic principles of how systems change. And these generic principles allow the development of change management methodologies. We offer two programs. Firstly, the Biometrics Organization Transformation Program, which aims to transform an organization into a systemic learning organization that can manage change in a sustainable and creative manner. The second program is the Biometrics Societal Transformation Program. Amongst others, this program aims to redesign industries into sustainable supply chains. The biometrics transformation programs are education driven. This implies that we transfer knowledge to the internal change agents of the system who design, implement and maintain the system transformation, be it an organization or an industry supply chain or a section of a supply chain. The programs facilitate stakeholder participation in a transparent manner and they ensure the coherent and win-win integration of these diverse stakeholder interests. The outcome of enrolling in a biometrics transformation program will be a system transformation. It will allow the system to be viable, sustainable, capable of ongoing change within the ever-changing environment, as well as being able to co-create desirable environmental change with other stakeholders, for example, along an industry supply chain or in a regional context. In summary, the different levels of reality are incorporated into the different phases of the biometrics programs as follows. The education phase creates a paradigm shift in delegates. It transforms them into systems thinkers 
by changing their personal conceptual reality, especially from a transdisciplinary perspective, both the web and the field perspective. The brainstorming phase consists of the assignments that the delegates have to do during the education phase. They also have to facilitate surveys amongst stakeholders. Both the assignments and the surveys are concerned with exploring the physical and conceptual reality of the current system which the delegate represents. The brainstorming looks at both the problems and weaknesses of the current system as well as its strengths and successes. The delegates will also look at the system's dynamics of the system. This is a conceptual representation of the logic of the current system. The brainstorming phase is also concerned with generating new ideas in conceptual reality from both a disciplinary and transdisciplinary perspective. The disciplinary perspective will produce specific solutions to problems while the transdisciplinary perspective lifts the system into a new logic and comes up with ideas based on that new logic. The ideal design phase is concerned with the redesign of the conceptual reality of the system in an idealized manner and then the design of practical strategies that if implemented will move the system into a more desirable future. After the program delegates have created a draft design, they will facilitate increasing numbers of stakeholders to participate in design iterations to ensure that the conceptual reality of the system satisfies all stakeholders and incorporates their specific needs and perspectives and that therefore stakeholders are likely to support the design. Once reasonable agreement amongst stakeholders about the ideal design of the system is achieved, the program delegates will enter the implementation planning phase. This involves planning the implementation in conceptual reality under consideration of the resources that the system has available in physical reality. During the implementation phase, the current system will implement in physical reality what is prescribed by its redesigned conceptual reality. The resulting changes in physical reality will be measured and compared with the intended outcomes prescribed by the new design. If the actual outcomes do not match the intended outcomes, there could be replanning involved, either redesign or changing the implementation strategies. Concerning the consciousness reality, this is catered for in all phases. By building self-reflection into all phases, the awareness of the delegates and the stakeholders around the system and their relationship to the system is enhanced. Self-reflection is encouraged at all levels, the personal, the team and the system level. In other words, the delegates and the stakeholders will question what does this mean for me as a person, what does this mean for our team, what does this mean for the system, in other words the organization or our industry. And also, what did we learn at each of those levels. Also, in each phase of the biometrics program, the self-reflection will have a different focus. In the education phase, the focus of self-reflection is the personal paradigm of each of the delegates. During the brainstorming phase, the focus of self-reflection will shift to questions like do we really understand the current system, do we include all dimensions and stakeholders, and concerning solutions we could ask is this really a creative solution, does it reflect a new logic, 
can we become more creative? Could we use other methods to create even more innovative and more creative ideas, etc.? During the ideal design phase, the ideas generated in the brainstorming phase will be selected and combined into designs. The reflection will be around what is more or less desirable, what is win-win, what is feasible. During the stakeholder enrollment phase, each stakeholder will ask what the design means for the stakeholder, how it impacts on the stakeholder, how the stakeholder impacts on the design, as well as on other stakeholders. So reflection will be around how to amend the design to truly create a win-win situation for all the stakeholders concerned. During the implementation planning phase, the reflection will center around resources. Are we utilizing the resources in an optimal manner? Are there enough resources? Can we generate different resources? Can we enhance the capacity of our resources? And similar questions. During the implementation phase, we reflect, is this really the best way of doing it? Does it work? Doesn't it work? Uh, do we need to change the way we plan the implementation? Um, are the outcomes what we expected, etc. More information about the biometrics transformation programs is provided on our web page www.biometricsweb.com. Thank you.